one, I wanted to do a couple of different chart studies and walk you guys through the process of looking at a, a particular stock and at the charts and deciding whether to sell, buy, or continue to hold. So I want to look at this one in particular right now. It's it's Today is Sunday when I'm filming this video, so this whole gray area here is the weekend. Um, this is the time in sale, which I love. Um, it would be lighting up green and red, buy and sell, if it was uh, any day of the week when people were buying or selling. Um, obviously it's the weekend, so markets are closed, there's no trades going on, but I wanted to just walk you through my thought process when I pull up a chart like this. So obviously, well, I was going to cover, I was going to cover it with my hand. Um, this whole area here, we don't know what's going to happen. So let's take it minute by minute, or in this particular case, you can see over here, I'm selected on the five minute chart. Um, I like the five minute chart, by the way, because it gives you a more realistic uh, idea of what's going on over the course of many, many minutes instead of one minute. Um, if you see a breakout, for example, which would be one of these little blue arrows on a one minute chart, it doesn't necessarily indicate that the stock is moving higher. It just means that there was a surge of volume at that one particular moment. Maybe someone just rushed in and bought a whole lot of shares. It doesn't necessarily mean that the, there's a trend or a pattern or an uptrend or movement or a rally or momentum. It just means in that one particular moment, someone went in and bought a large position of shares. I like the five minute chart better because it lets us see that there's continued momentum, that it's not just one guy, it's a lot of people buying uh, and holding. So let's see here, at, right at the open, so this little gray line that you see right here in the corner is 9.30 in the morning. Stock market opens, boom, immediate breakout right at the open. A breakout is any time it, it crosses over this. This is resistance. This red line here is resistance. It's saying nothing, you, you have to get over this line to break out of the resistance. We're, we're not letting the stock go any higher. It's resisting this level. It's resisting a breakout. When it crosses through, like it does right here, and you see this little blue arrow pop up on the screen, it's telling you we've got a breakout. A breakout to the upside. You can also have breakouts to the downside, like this. This is normally an indicator. But I'm thinking, looking at this chart, I don't think this is a buy indicator today. I don't, I'm not ready to buy this stock here. And the reason is, look at this trading range. What this is indicating is that this stock, it's telling you, because these bands are so far apart, it's indicating to you that this stock could go higher. It could, you can see if you follow this cursor, this gray line at the top of the screen all the way to the right, it could break over $2.37. That's where it's currently trading right here. And it breaks out. It's telling you it might potentially go higher. But it's also saying it has this whole range here to play with, which means just as easily as it could be 237, it could also be 216. And it could go anywhere in this range. Are you willing to take a gamble? That's the question you have to ask. Are you willing to take a gamble buying it here, even though it's broken out, even though this is technically an indicator, and not only that, we're getting two. Back-to-back -back breakouts are good, because like I said, versus the one-minute chart, on a five-minute chart, the break, the double breakouts, the back-to-back -back breakouts, are an indicator that there's continued momentum. There's a rally on the uh, on the brink. There's something about to happen. But my, my mind is saying, because these bands are so far apart, I'm not feeling it. I'm not going to buy right here. Now, as long as the stock is heading in this positive territory, as long as it's over this 20-day moving average, this middle line here, as long as it's over that, it's in positive territory, if you've purchased it, you could hold. However, once it starts pulling back, we start to get a little more nervous. And as you see here, it breaks, it crosses this 20-day moving average, which isn't a guarantee, but it is an indicator that it could go lower. See, these are breakouts. They're, they're not guarantees. They're just indicators it could go higher. But it doesn't because these bands are so far apart because not only am i thinking it's got a huge trading range a lot of other people are too in addition to that there also has to be volume to keep the rally going and you can see here looking down here at these little blue little lines here there's not a whole lot of volume so what happens it starts to go down and once it crosses this line right here if you have purchased it in this area Maybe let's say you purchase it at a, oh, I'm in the way. 
let's say you purchase it at 223 right here in the morning you purchase it at 223 225 whatever it pops up to here and you go you know what it's still in positive territory uh oh it's starting to dip anywhere here you sell it it's going to be a profit might not be a huge profit but it's going to be a profit crosses below that's the point where you go you know what i bought it at 225 it's 230 maybe you had a thousand shares so it's up five cents fifty dollar profit you might want to consider taking it here that would be my thought process it's crossed below it's indicating it could potentially go lower yes it could go also higher but i have a profit i'm going to take it if you don't the next thing you look for is a breakout to the downside which we get right here and it bounces around you can see it hits it crosses below it starts to move a little higher but it's crossing below at what point do we say you know what it's gone down enough I'm gonna buy it well we look down here at the relative strength index this guy tells you anything under this line now anything under this 30 is a buy indicator it means that the stock has oversold too many people are dumping the stock they don't want it. they want out conversely this means that it's overbought it means too many people are buying it and you can see it right here it's indicating it even though it crosses above the 60 the 70 line um, it's an indicator people should be saying let's get out I'm, I'm out of here it, it's run its course it's had its momentum it's had its rally you know I bought it down here at 225 it shot up to 240 maybe I've made 200 bucks I'm out it's crossed over this relative strength index that's a signal to me not a guarantee but a signal that perhaps it's too many people are buying it same as down here if it crosses this line it's an indicator that too many people have sold it and it might rebound it might break out and start moving higher again not a guarantee and also as you notice it doesn't actually cross this line so the question you have to ask yourself is realistically how much room could this stock go lower right we're all the way up here at 240 it crosses below here it breaks out to the downside here it breaks out again it breaks out again it breaks out again it keeps breaking out to the downside keeps moving lower and lower and lower to the point where it gets all the way down to 215 so from 240 to 215 so the next question you have to ask yourself is yes it didn't cross the oversold territory but it got pretty close and how much lower do we realistically expect this stock to go it's down considerably from its high of the morning straight down 215 you might want to gamble here and you might want to roll the dice you might want to say you know even though it didn't cross into this oversold territory I'm gonna I'm gonna make a hunch here that it doesn't go much lower so you could buy it or you could wait and the thing we would be waiting for is either for it to cross over this 20-day moving average or to break out to the upside one or the other so you've got three options you can say even though it didn't hit, I'm going to say it's close enough and I'm going to buy here at 215. Or even 218, 219, anywhere in this range. It's a gamble. There's no guarantees with anything in the stock market. This is a gamble too. Okay, so fine, you buy it at 215. The next thing we're waiting for is to see it get up to here. Now, just because it crosses over this line doesn't mean that it's going to do anything. It doesn't mean that it's going to go higher it's just an indicator that it might so you can see now here it's around 220 221 you've purchased it at 215 so that's about a six cent gain let's go with the model that we purchased a thousand shares you've made about 60 bucks here do you want to get out or do you want to keep holding now the next thought is I'm gonna hold I'm gonna hold because I'll get out at 215. If it if it if my theory is wrong and it doesn't break out to the upside and instead reverses and comes back down, I will break even or I'll take a very small profit. You know, we're talking about $10 gain here. Um, I'll sell it at 216 instead of 215 or I'll sell it at 217 or I'll even wait and see if it gets down to 214 and I'll take a small very very small loss and break even, get out without losing too much money. But you could roll the dice. You could say, let's just see where it goes. I know where I'm going to get stopped out. So I'm, I'm potentially breaking even or losing very, very little. So there's no real loss here, right? 
Now, the next thing you want to do is calculate ahead of time what you reasonably think this stock could do. We've already seen it this morning go from 225 to 240. So about a 15, 20 cent realistically. Now, just because a stock does something in the morning, just because it goes from 225 to 240 in the morning doesn't mean that it'll do it again in the afternoon or the next day or the next month. But if you watch this stock over the long term, over weeks, potentially, and you see that this stock does trade within a range of, say, anywhere from 10 to 30 cents a day, you can start calculating. So you would open up your calculator over here and you would say, all right, I bought it at 215. If it gets to 230, I'll make $150. I'm pretty happy with that. But I want to talk about not being so literal when it comes to stocks. I think a lot of people get hurt because they come up with these hard and fast price numbers, right? I will buy it at 215, I will sell it at 230. If you aren't glued to your screen like I am right now, watching the stock during the day, 9.30 to 4, sitting there, it's like, a, it's like a spectator sport. You literally, you buy your stock and then you just sit back and you wait. And you just watch and you know where you're going to get out i'm in at 215 i'm going to be out at 216. if it if it if it keeps dropping if it had if it breaks out great i'll hold it i'll let it ride if it pushes lower how much of a risk do i want to take so i'll get out at 215. but i also have a target my price in mind which is around 230. but it has to be around 230. you can't be so literal here because stocks don't work that way. You can't say I will buy it at 215 and I will sell it at 230 and I will make exactly $150. You have to be in ranges. You have to say, all right, look, I don't, my, my goal would be that it gets up to 230. That would be nice. And anything over that, I would consider a bonus. But it might not do that. So you have to sit there and you have to watch. And you have to keep in mind that any time it crosses down below this 20-day moving average, we're starting to get nervous and we might want to exit because look what happens when it crosses below. These kind of indicators work because so many other traders use them too. So if I'm watching, waiting for it to cross below this 20-day moving average, everyone else is too. And so if I'm going to sell the second it crosses this 20-day moving average, everyone else will too. But just like this stays on the negative trend of the day, now you see that it's reverse course and it's staying on the positive side of the day. Even though there are some pullbacks here, all these reds are people selling, selling, selling. But it never gets even close to this 20 day moving average. So one theory is to say, I'm just going to sit back and let it ride. It might push higher gradually. It might break out a couple times. And you see it. There are two, like I said earlier in the video, two back to back breakouts. That's really good. We like those back to back breakouts. But we're also keeping an eye on the relative strength index because we want to keep in mind that anytime it starts to get close to the 70 line, just like people who follow this 20 day moving average and it crosses below and they sell, other people follow this line too. So anytime it crosses over the 70 line, we start to get a little nervous because we know that a pullback could happen just as it did here. Crosses over, look at it over here. Crosses over and then straight down. Not a guarantee that it'll happen that severely or even at all. They're just indicators. So at what point do I take my profit? Well, keeping in mind that this gray line here is 4 p.m. This is when the markets close. So we're around 3 o'clock in this area. 3.40, 3.45. We're getting closer and closer to the market close. The questions you have to start asking yourself at this point are, what day is it? Right. So this is a Friday that we're looking at right here, this is the Friday. Do I want to hold this or any stock over the weekend? The next question you have to ask is, what time are we living in? Donald Trump is our batshit insane president. Do you really wanna be holding a stock over the weekend with this guy in charge? Anything could happen one day to the next. He could say anything stupid on Twitter and tank the markets on Monday. Do you really wanna be holding over the weekend given that he's the president? The last question is, we're in the midst of a global pandemic. A global pandemic. 
Do you really want your money tied up over the weekend when you can't access it if you need it? At this point, I would say, you know what? I'm probably going to sell this stock here. We're getting close to the close. The volume is doing a thing. It's not so close. And look what happens. I'm not the only person who said, I'm going to get out of this stock. Now, I didn't know this would happen, this sell-off right here, because I'm trading in real time, right? We don't know what's going to happen next. But the, the question that I'm asking is the same question everyone else is asking. We've had a rally. I bought it at 215. It's now around 227. And we're getting very close to the end of the market here. So 227 minus 215. We've got our, wait, that's not right. Um, 227 minus 215. Oh, it is right. We've got $120 profit. I'm going to take it here. I'm going to take my 120. It's not 150 which we thought if we could get to 230, if we, if we could get to 230, we would have made $150. We're only at 100, uh, right? We have 1,000 shares. We're only at $120. Do we really, really, really want to be greedy and hold out for another measly 30 bucks? Or do we want to take the majority of the money, the $130? We're not getting any indicators here that it's over, overbought. We're not getting any indicators that it could potentially head lower. It's staying on the positive territory of the chart, but we're heading into a weekend. We're heading close to the close. Even if it wasn't heading into the weekend, we're heading into the close. These markets are insanely volatile these days. You really want to tie your money up. That's the question you have to ask. So um, the last thing we want to look for, which I forgot to mention earlier, is we want to see the bands narrow, right? So like I said earlier, this is too wide. We're not really feeling too um, too positive about this very wide band. What we like is to when the bands narrow and they kind of consolidate. All that means is there's less room for that stock to go to break out. That's a good thing. It's trading within a very tight range. That's what we call it. It's trading from around 215 to 220, 223, maybe a five or six cent range of wiggle room versus a 20 or 30 or 40 cent range. So with all that factored in, these are just some of the things that we use to uh, help make a decision whether to buy or to hold. Um, that's just one stock. There are tens of thousands out there. And just because you see one pattern or one uh, similar looking chart, don't think that because it happened to the one, it'll happen to the others. Don't think that because it went from 215 to 240 or you know from one price to the other that it'll get there the next day. Stocks don't play by those rules. They're very flexible. Just because it did something yesterday doesn't mean it'll do it today. You have to be in the moment. You have to be thinking about your profit, your estimate, right? We forecasted about $150 of gains. We were starting to get towards the close of the day and we were starting to think, you know, how much room could this really go? We're getting close to the end of the day. The volume is kind of a little bit slowing down. There is some volume coming in, but it's selling. I'm gonna lock in my profit. Might not be the $150 that I wanted, but it's close. And so the goal here isn't to make all of the money. We don't know where the stock is gonna go, but we can kind of estimate where we think it will go and where we'd be happy if it went. And it happens so frequently that you'll sell a stock at a $200 profit and then it goes up another 10 or 15 cents, the stock. It's another 100 or $150 in gains. You can't be upset. I know the urge is there to be upset and the urge is there to chase and jump back in. But when you jump back in, that's where you get hurt. I wanna show you another one. Um, let's see here. Uh, we're gonna to switch to the is this the right one? Yeah. Look what happens. It breaks out at around $1.90, and it's just straight up. It just keeps going. Now, we don't know at this point at a $2.40 range that it's going to get all the way to $2.94. Nobody knows that. But we do know what our forecasted profit is. We'd like to make around $200. So what did we buy it at? We bought it at, let's say, $1.90, and we sold it at $2.38. So 238 minus 190, $480 profit. 
because we have a thousand shares. Now we sell it here at 238 and we're happy. And we're going, yeah, I made money. But we keep watching and it's just straight up. I mean, look at this, it just keeps going. The knots in your stomach are unreal. I can relate because it happens to me all the time. But you have to remember that we had a plan. The plan was $200. That's your daily plan. That's my daily plan at least, $200 per trade. And I ended up making 480. Hell, even if I had gotten out at 300, even if I had gotten out at 350 or 250, I would have called it a win. And I would have been very upset, right? I would have been very upset to see it continue going, but I wouldn't have gotten back in. Why not? Because at this point, uh, at this point, right around the $2.50, and fifty cent range, it looks like, it crosses over this overbought territory. It means too many people are buying. So I'm being cognizant of the fact that pretty soon it's gonna pull back. Without this, you might be impulsive and you might say, fuck it, I'm getting back in. Now let's say you had a $480 profit. I'm gonna write it down because I'm gonna be doing a lot of math here. We had a $480 profit. Let's say we bought back in at 280 and it goes up to 294 and we keep holding, we don't sell and it starts to drop now, precipitously. Now we've got a loss, right? We're in a 280, we're at a loss now, it's 262. This is why I don't chase. I take my profits, I walk away, I don't even look at the chart. I, I look at the chart much later, an hour later, even maybe sometimes after the stock, the markets have closed. Because I don't wanna feel like I've missed out and even I, who have been trading for eight years, might wanna rush back in. But look what happens when you rush back in. You know some poor guy bought this stock at 294 and I, I hope that he sold it as it started to drop and I hope he didn't hold. Because look what happens here. Let's say you buy it at 280 and it goes all the way down. Now this is why I was talking about in an earlier video, these big ranges make me nervous because it's telling me that this stock can go anywhere from 249 all the way down to, what are we, 130. That's terrifying. It's a precipitous drop. And look what happens crosses below this 20-day moving average and it just keeps going lower. It goes all the way down to 170. Now, our guy who bought it at 280 might be thinking because he's a novice, he's new to this, well, it went, it went from 180 to 294 yesterday, so it'll do it again the next day or eventually. There's no guarantees to this. So now let's take a look here. It's 280. It gets down to 170. That's his loss, $1,100, right? That's his loss, $1,100. So he made 480 when he bought it and then sold it. But then he was impulsive and greedy and wanted to get back in. So he bought it at 280 and he held it. He didn't sell because he couldn't admit that he had rushed in and had done something foolish. What he should have done was bought it at 280. Well, he shouldn't have bought it at all, but if he did, he should have bought it at 280 and said, how much of my 480 am I willing to lose? How much of that profit am I willing to eat in on? Maybe $80 worth? I'll take a loss if I lose $80 on this next round of trades. So it has to go down 80, it has to go down eight cents. So he buys it at 180. If it goes to 172, that's where he gets out. And he loses 80 cents, right? So he buys at 180, he sells at 172, he loses. $80 from his 400. So he still is overall with a big win of 480 bucks. But if he doesn't, he has that $1,100, whoops, he has that $1,100 uh, loss because he bought it here and he held it all the way down here. And now he's just hoping that this stock comes back. But you can see this is gray, so this is uh, overnight. Look what happens the next day. It goes even lower. This is a stock that's gonna do that. These penny stocks are so volatile. It's so important to get in and out very quickly and not hold and definitely not chase. And that's why we have these indicators. We have the RSI and we have these bands to tell us, don't chase, a pullback is gonna come. It does suck. It does suck that you bought it at 180 and it shot up to 238 or 248 and you sold it. And then it goes all the way to 294. Of course that sucks but it hurts even more to buy it up here and hold because you're too proud and end up with this big fat loss of 1100 bucks. So that's why we have these indicators. That's why we have these charts. 
Um, I know this was a longer video than I was planning, but I think it's very important. Um, I hope you learned something. And by the way, if you want to set up these studies, you just click here and you go to add studies. Let me move myself out of the way. So uh, you go to studies and you can see what which ones I have. I have the Bollinger Bands and I have the RSI. And you can even search for them right here. So you don't have to go through the whole list, uh, you know, pulling down, let's just close it and show you what it looks like. These are all the studies. These are all the studies that they have. My God, look at how many there are. So forget going through and looking. Just type in, just go to edit studies and search for what you want. Bollinger bands, there they are. We have the Bollinger bands, we have the Bollinger band crossovers. The crossover is this little breakout. And then we have the relative strength index. And that's how you set it up. You hit apply, you hit OK, and you're set. Um, anyway, I hope you thought this video was helpful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, and uh, have a good day. Thanks for watching.